good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's so wonderful to see everyone here today for this lovely occasion. I see we have several members of our Board of Education. It's wonderful. Um, I'm Betty Hager Francis, and I serve as Deputy Chief Administrative Officer for Health, Human Services, and Education. And I'm really especially delighted to welcome everyone to today's swearing-in ceremony for Dr. Donna Wiseman. Am I okay, Jerome? Dr. Donna Wiseman and Dr. Segun Eubanks to the Prince George's County Board of Education. Dr. Eubanks is being sworn in uh, to his second term as a member of the board and actually his third term as its chair. Uh, as you may be aware, County Executive Rashern Baker has the, the discretion to appoint and reappoint three at-large members of the Board of Education. By law, each appointed board member is required to possess a high level of knowledge and experience in specific areas. And uh, before we go any further, I'd like to recognize, first of all, the families of our board members. Um, if you would stand, that would be wonderful. So I know Sherelle Eubanks and Yasmin and, and, and John Weissman. So we thank you so much for being here and our, our Board of Education members who are here this morning. Would you please stand and be recognized? Sonia Williams, Kay Alexander Wallace, and my dear friend, Carolyn Boston. Boston. Thank you. I have a brain freeze. Before we actually uh, get underway with the swearing in, I'd like to pause just a moment to highlight some of our educational system, which is making great strides and give kudos as well as to thank everyone involved in this collaborative effort. One of the people that I'd really like to thank is Dr. Monique Davis, who is here uh, with us today. She is the Deputy Superintendent of Prince George's County Public Schools, and she is here representing um, Dr. Kevin Maxwell, who actually is ill, um, is ill this morning. Um, but we thank you so much for, for your, the work that you do each and every day and for being here with us this morning. And thank you so much. <laughs> to everybody who's here, our Chief Administrative Officer, Nicholas Majet, and our wonderful partners from the Clerk of Courts. Would you all stand up and sit? Because they really are so flexible in working with us. It's just absolutely wonderful, and we do really appreciate it very much. So as I was saying that this collaborative effort is being led by uh, Prince George's County Public Schools um, uh, Chief Executive Officer Dr. Kevin Maxwell with um, the Board of Education, which is such a solid and strong supporter of the school system. And of course, our County Executive Rashern Baker, who, by the way, touts our school system's progress wherever he goes and unconditionally advocates for nothing short of the best for every child matriculating in our school system from pre-K through high school and we now have a Promise Scholarship program to assure that more children will be able to go to community college and that is a wonderful new um, advance for Prince George's County this year. I think we should give the college a I also want to take the time this morning to share with you um, what a little, of, a little of what the hard work produces when you have motivated administrators, teachers, involved parents, and eager and very bright students that have only one path set before them, and that is the path of excellence. Um, one of the things that has happened, and it is unusual because most school systems have declining enrollment. Prince George's County has got increasing enrollment. Our enrollment is now at 132,000 students, 
which is way up from what it was just a few years ago. Our young learners are in expanded uh, full-day pre-kindergarten programs throughout Prince George's County. Dual enrollment registration has piqued the interest of our students and their parents and has resulted in a spike to almost 600 children who are duly enrolled uh, in, in courses in our high school and in our community college so that when they leave high school, they will also have an associate's degree. This is quite wonderful. That's two years their parents don't have to pay for that college degree. It's a wonderful thing. Um, our language immersion programs have, have also expanded. We have eight now. Of course, you know, we have Spanish and we have French. We have Korean. We have so many uh, Spanish immersion programs. It's unusual. Uh, but Prince George's County is leading the way once again. It's also no noteworthy to mention that the arts integration program uh, in our school system has expanded to 65 new schools uh, and programs system-wide. That is something that we should really be very proud of because it is waking up that creative element in our children and that is going to lead to really enhanced student achievement. We're proud that our children are college and career ready and they have garnered this year almost $150 million in scholarships. Um, and that is a, is, a, is a great advance for our students um, and their parents as well. Eight of our schools have received the Maryland Excellence in Gifted and Talented Education Award. And we're also environmentally conscious and responsible. And 71 of our schools were recognized as, a Mar as Maryland Green Schools. That's really something. And it's teaching our children about environmental responsibility in, in addition to our being responsible in the way that our carbon footprint is, is being revealed in, in, in this country. Um, we often emphasize well-rounded students to our, our Prince George's County Public School scholars. Uh, we strive to be a well-rounded school system thanks to really innovative academic and enrichment programs brought to you by very dynamic leaders. And speaking of dynamic leaders, I took those few minutes to talk about some of the wonderful things that are happening at Prince George's County Public Schools because I really wanted to set the stage uh, before we got underway with this um, swearing in for these new, uh, for our new appointed board member, who is Dr. Donna Wiseman, and uh, Dr. Segun Eubanks, who has been the partner with the board of, the leader of the Board of Education, who has partnered with the school administration and Dr. Kevin Maxwell to bring all these advances to the fore. So um, I'm going to ask Dr. Wiseman and Dr. Eubanks to please join me at the podium. You really just kind of stand up. <laughs> because I just want to tell people how wonderful you really are and how fortunate we are to have you as part of our leadership. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read an abridged version of their professional backgrounds and I, at your leisure I encourage you to read the extremely impressive backgrounds and histories of these two veteran educators um, their full bios will be available in the uh, press release that's going to go out toward the end of today. The, not the whole thing, <laughs> Dr. Wise, but Dr. Wiseman has one that's about 10 pages long, and I think so the Dr. Eubanks does as well. Uh, not only their experiences, but their writings and the scholarship that these two individuals bring to our school system is just nothing less than than, than astounding, really. Um, Dr. Donna Wiseman, um, as of, I think, until this June? July 1st. July 1st, was the Dean of the College of Education at the University of Maryland at College Park. She brings a combination of national level policy experience and on the ground experience as Dean of the College of Education and a professor in the Department of Teaching and Learning, Policy and Leadership. 
a former public school teacher, Donna's professional and scholarly interests include literacy development and instruction, school-university partnerships, teacher professional development, diversity in today's classrooms, and equitable access to education. Dr. Wiseman is involved with a number of professional organizations and agencies at the state and national level. Dr. Wiseman received a doctorate in reading from the University of Missouri, Columbia, a Master of Science in Engineering in Reading from Arkansas State University, and a Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education from Oklahoma State University. Let's give Dr. Wiseman a big hand. And now to Dr. Segun Eubanks. Uh, Dr. Eubanks, as you know, has been a member of the Board of Education and its chair since 2013. Uh, Dr. Eubanks and his colleagues on the school board have been laser focused and among the strong voices that have contributed to the measurable improvements in our school system. Dr. U U Segun Eubanks is the director of professional educator support for the National Education Association. And he is proud to say that he has over 30 years of experience in education. As you know, the NEA is one of the nation's leading organizations committed to advancing the cause of public education. Dr. Eubanks previously served 11 years as Director of Teacher Quality for the NEA. In these roles, Dr. Eubanks leads major policy initiatives and programs such as the Teacher Leadership Initiative, the Teacher Residency Task Force, the National Commission on Effective Teachers and Teaching, and the NEA's Committee on Professional Standards and Practice. As I stated before, in 2013, Dr. Eubanks was appointed as the Chair of the Board of Education for Prince George's County Public Schools, which was a newly established governance system designed to significantly improve educational outcomes in this very diverse, semi-urban school district. Dr. Eubanks has spent his professional career working to promote opportunity, access, and equity in America's education systems. He has served in various leadership roles with national nonprofit education organizations as well. Dr. Eubanks earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in educational advocacy from the University of Massachusetts at Amherst a Master of Science degree in Human Services Administration from Springfield, <laughs> <laughs> from Springfield College, and a Doctorate of Education in Teaching and Learning Policy from the University of Maryland College Park. <laughs> and now that our fearless leader, Dr. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> County Executive Rashern L. Baker III has arrived, let's get these wonderful stellar Educators <laughs> sworn in to our Board of Education. To solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. And that I will. And that I will be faithful. Be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And laws thereof. And that I will. And that I will support the charter. Support the charter and laws and laws of Prince George's County. Of Prince George's County. And that I will. And that I will to the best of my skill. To the best of my skill and judgment. And judgment diligently. Diligent and faithfully, and faithfully, without partiality, without partiality, or prejudice, or prejudice, execute the office of, execute the office of, chairman for the board of, chairman for the board of, education for Prince George's County, education for Prince George's County, according to the Constitution, according to the Constitution, and laws of this state, and laws of this state, and the charter, and the charter, and laws, and laws of Prince George's County, Prince George's County. And bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland, to the state of Maryland, and support the Constitution, and support the Constitution, and laws thereof, and laws thereof, and that I will, and 
that I will support the charter. Support the charter and laws and laws of Prince George's County. Of Prince George's County. And that I will and that I will to the best of my skill. To the best of my skill. And judgment. And judgment. Diligently. Diligently. And faithfully. And faithfully. Without partiality. Without partiality. Or prejudice. Or prejudice. Execute the office of. Execute the office of. Member. Member. For the Board of Education. For the Board of Education. For Prince George's County. For Prince George's County. According to the Constitution, according to the Constitution of this state, of this state, and the Charter, and the Charter, and law, and law of Prince George's County, of Prince George's County. Thank you. Have remarks from um, our chair, Mr. Sago Newbanks. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's, a, it's a, again, just an honor and a privilege to, uh, to be here. Uh, I think that what I mainly want to do is just give thanks to so many folks uh, who've helped uh, to make this possible. Uh, uh, first and foremost, thanks to County Executive Baker uh, for the faith that you have put in me, uh, for giving me this tremendous honor and responsibility. Um, it goes uh, to me without question that uh, your uh, brave and bold leadership in taking on the issue of education has made a tremendous difference in the lives of countless people here in Prince George's County uh, and across the region. Uh, and so I thank you uh, for that. Uh, I want to, there's a, a lot of folks I want to thank. I want to um, thank my fellow Board of Education members. There are three uh, here today. Uh, Carolyn Boston, Carol Alexander Wallace, and Sonia Williams, uh, and so many of us are so deeply committed to the charge that you've put before us uh, of supporting the school system and helping it to meet its potential to be great. Uh, so thank you so much for your unwavering support and your commitment. I'd be remiss if I didn't give particular thanks to my partner uh, and sister and friend, Carolyn Boston, co uh, uh, Vice Chair of the Board. Carolyn, without your unwavering support and friendship, uh, I think uh, I could not have uh, gotten through the last four years. Uh, and so thank you very much. Uh, several members of my board staff team are here. Uh, Thea Wilson and Aisha Berkeley are here. Uh, Stephanie Anderson, who's our board chair. The tremendous amount of professionalism and work and commitment. Council, what did I say? Board chair. Board chair. Board chair. Board, chair. <laughs> board, chair. <laughs> board council, thank you. Uh, and your, your, your tremendous support uh, and professionalism and hard work really uh, uh, have, have, uh, have helped to make this work possible. So uh, thank you for that. And of course, my family uh, is here. My, my, my daughter in the back, Yasmeen, my son, Jabron, um, <laughs> two, of, uh, two of my other children who are out and about the country at this time. Uh, when I was sworn in four years ago, I was able to say that I was a parent of Prince George's County Public School students. Uh, if Curtis Valentine were here, who has younger children, he said, I can't say that anymore. Uh, I can now only claim to be a parent of two esteemed alum. First of all, this county public school. So I, thank, I thank the system for that. Uh, and of course, my wife, uh, the other, and some would say the real Dr. Eubanks, uh, uh, Sherelle Eubanks, who has been uh, my rock. She has helped me uh, through the toughest times. She has been my best friend and often my harshest critic. <laughs> When I get home at night, she says, I don't believe the system is doing this. Go fix it and fix it now, and here's how you do it. Um, uh, and so thank you uh, for your, for your love. So I'll just say, you know, the, the, the last four years have been uh, an adventure of a lifetime. Uh, without question, uh, this task. I've, uh, I often brag, as some have noted, about my 30-year education career and all of my experiences. Uh, but without doubt, the, the past four years as chair of Prince George's County Public Schools has been the most important and significant uh, challenge uh, and, and task of, of my professional career and, and, and in many ways my personal career. It's been uh, a joy of a lifetime. Uh, and I'm committed. When I started four years ago, I knew that Prince George's County had the potential to move from a very good school system to one of the top school systems in the nation. 
I, and after having witnessed the, and, 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 and worked with the thousands of passionate and talented educators, the talented principals, the committed administrators, and most important, these brilliant, talented, diverse, and loving young people who we get the privilege and the opportunity to work with every day, I know without question that Prince George's County can, should, and must become a beacon for what quality education means for every child every day across the nation. I know we can do that. Right here. Now, uh, the, uh, it's a book that I really like called The Dance of Change by Peter Sengi. Uh, and Peter Sengi talks about this concept of profound change. Profound change is the change in systems like policies, processes, and procedures combined with change in people, their beliefs, their attitudes, and their actions. Changing policies, we know from the board, is not difficult to do. We get up, we vote, we change policies. Changing culture, changing people's attitudes, beliefs, and actions is what our charge is over the next four years. And that's when we begin to significantly change the culture of our schools, and we're well on the way to doing that, that we're really going to create the kind of profound change uh, in Prince George's County and make sure that every student every day gets the excellent education he or she deserves. Thank you. Now we hear from uh, Dr. Weisman, our newest board member. Thank you very much. So most of you in this room know me as uh, the Dean of the College of Education and a professor in higher ed, but I began my career as a fourth and fifth grade teacher. Um, education is my family's business. We are a family of teachers. My grandfather taught not in the state, but the territory of Oklahoma. He actually rode his horse to a one-room schoolhouse and I have the contract that said that he was paid $22 a month by the territory of Oklahoma. Um, it must be in my genes because my daughter and several of her cousins, my nieces and nephews, are part of a four generation of a family of teachers. There were five teachers in my immediate family. My father, a former ag teacher and a chemistry teacher, uh, became a farmer at some point, but it's a long story, but <laughs> served on the Board of Education in the very small Oklahoma town where I grew up. I'm very proud of the teachers in my family, and I bring that lifelong passion for education to this role. So for the past 16 years, Prince George's County has been my home, and my hopes for Prince George's County schools are that all children all children and young people have the highest quality, most equitable educational experience we can possibly provide. Now that I've stepped down from this very busy role of a deanship at the University of Maryland, I feel that I can continue contributing in this very important way. If I can help Prince George's County Public Schools move to the next level that Dr. Eubanks was talking about, in any one area, any one area, it would be more than worth any time and effort that I can contribute. So yesterday I spent the day at the Sasser building to onboard, remember that? Uh, filling out forms and learning much more about this role. As, by the way, the staff were great. I really appreciate everything they did. I spent some time in the board's executive meeting room and noticed that the room was covered with pictures of kids. You know those. And um, this is appropriate because I think all that happens in this room, that executive boardroom, and in the room outside, has to come back to those faces that we saw, can see on the wall, and the real faces that are in front of our, in our teachers in these classrooms. I sometimes think about all the stuff that goes on the school board. And then when a teacher gets to it, you're facing a little 40-pound kid sitting right in front of you. That's what is important. Do we do ex important things in the school board executive meeting room? We certainly do. But that 40-pound kid 
or that 200 pound kid <laughs> up in the upper grades is, is what's important. And so we should focus on the, these young people who are represented by the pictures on that wall. And I'm going to keep those faces of our students in my mind as the board deliberates and discusses the many, many issues that will ultimately become part of my work. The board's focus must be the students and their potential to develop to the highest potential. It is their right to be able to develop. And the Board of Education must consistently come back to that focus. Because of my background, I cannot help but extend the student focus to the important role of our teachers. Our highest priority should be to assure that there are quality teachers and administrators in each and every individual school and high quality educators are the basis of educational equity. We can't have that equity unless we have those high quality teachers and, and, and other educators in every building. There should be no excuse for anything else and Prince George's County Public Schools owes this to our young people and their families. So I'm really honored, I, I can't tell you, um, to, I am privileged and very much humbled to be a part of the Prince George's County School Board of Education. Are there challenges and issues? Hmm, yeah, a few. <laughs> Are there enduring problems that need to be addressed? Yes, of course. Are there serious critics and disagreements? To be expected. But there is so much hope, so much potential. One cannot help but be excited about the future of our schools. Um, I look forward to working with Dr. Eubanks and the board members, but I'm going to need your guidance and I'm going to need to learn from you because you all have had a lot of experience as we confront our challenges and I want to be there to celebrate many successes with you too. So as a board member, I'll do my best to remain informed about the educational issues that impact our children and young people who are educated in the Prince George's County Public School classrooms. I'm also committed to the importance of representing children and families from throughout the entire county. And of course, the key to this is listening to all the diverse voices um, in our community, those particularly who care about our children. So thank you, County Executive Baker, for supporting me. It's my sincere hope that I can offer my experience and my knowledge and my passion as the board works to contribute to our school's efforts to be great by choice. Thank you. David, can we have, I know you're representing Dr. Maxwell, our Deputy uh, Superintendent, Dr. Davis. We're around the board. Thank you so much, and on behalf of Dr. Maxwell, I'm honored to be present. I know that he definitely sends his regrets, but he is a little under the weather, but would not have wanted to miss congratulating his friend and our chair of the board on his reappointment, and also the transition of one of our university partners onto this side of the house. I also, on behalf of Dr. Maxwell, just would like to thank our county executive for his commitment to public education. His vision to change the oversight of the school system has been invaluable. In order to be able to educate over 132,000 children, to employ 19,000 individuals, and then to service their families, the school system cannot do that alone. And it has been wonderful to have the partnership of the county government, and we're proud to call your staff our colleagues. Gallup has done extensive research on leadership and what followers want from their leaders. And they found that they're looking for four elements. They're looking for compassion, honesty, stability, and hope. Over the past four years, Dr. Chair, as I affectionately call him, <laughs> has provided all of those things. One thing that has been missing from Prince George's County, however, has been stability in leadership. And we're thankful that the county executive has not only reappointed Dr. Chair, 
but has also renewed the contract of Dr. Maxwell so that we can have that stability to continue to do the work. Our partnerships with the universities around our metropolitan area have been absolutely invaluable. Dr. Wiseman's leadership at the University of Maryland has provided great and wonderful teachers to our school system, and we look forward to her transitioning from the student adult world back to our side of the house working with babies where she first started her career. Thank you so much for the service that you're going to both continue to provide. Thank you board members for continuing to ask those hard questions of us, challenge our thinking, and push our practice. It is our desire as a school system to be great by choice, but we can't do that without the governance and collective dialogue that comes from our Board of Education. We not only want Prince George's County to be a choice for our citizens to live, work, and recreate, but we want it to be the first choice of our citizens to send their students. So congratulations, and let the work begin. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Um, I'd also, and I'll, my remarks will be brief. Uh, you heard from the, the reason we're here today. But I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Betty Francis for the hard work and great work she's done, not only over these last four years, uh, but these last almost seven years when we asked her, I told her, I said, listen, come work for me. It's going to be really easy. <laughs> it's not going to be difficult at all. It's going to be smooth sailing. I don't ask a lot. And we got like a little job for you. You know, you're going to deal with you know, health care, you know, social service. And I'll throw a little education there, but it'll be simple. You know, we're not going to do anything. And uh, she has taken on that task, and she has moved every one of those areas forward. Um, and I'd like to give her a round of applause. <laughs> now, I'm supposed to say brief remarks about how great these individuals are, and they are. <laughs> I'd like to start with Dr. Wiseman. First of all, thank you so much uh, for agreeing to take on this task. And thank I want to thank your husband for uh, allowing us in your retirement to come and do this work. Um, Dr. Eubanks and I and Dr. Davis know uh, how much the family sacrifices uh, when you take on these public tasks. And so we don't think, you know, we, we're mindful of that and we know this is a great sacrifice. And, but it's one that will help bend the future in Prince George's County. So thank you, thank you. Um, I got to know Dr. Wiseman actually not as an elected official, but in my last private job uh, when I worked for a nonprofit uh, where we were going around the country trying to figure out how you recruit, train, and develop uh, teachers of color. And we also were looking at how do you close what then was referred to as the gap between uh, minority students in uh, in our school, K through 12 uh, school system, and um, and other students, and we went to Howard University, and then we went to the University of Maryland, and we asked for a partnership, and Dr. Wiseman, who was the assistant, I mean vice dean, assistant, assistant, dean. assistant dean at the time, and soon became the dean, which was great for us, we started working, where we actually brought in, thanks to her help, her teachers, her cohorts. Uh, but her leadership, we were bringing in teachers, cohorts of teachers from around the country to the University of Maryland uh, to be taught. And that was our relationship. And I remembered that, which is a bad thing if I remember stuff. Because, you know, I, I put it in my mind and at some point I'm going to figure I'm going to call on you because we're going to have great work. And so when I became, uh, when I was running for county executive, um, Dr. Eubanks and I were working, not really me, but Dr. Eubanks, uh, was working on a policy for education reform in, um, in Prince George's County. And part of that was to put together a, um, a task force to help guide us. And I said, you know what, I remember this person who was really great at the University of Maryland. And I'm sure she has free time. But she's just a dean at that point. And she came on and uh, Betty Francis though that helped us with that. Um, but when this, you know, my commitment to Prince George's County was that I was going to find the best men and women that help lead this school system. Um, that we were going to convince them to come on board. And I'm so proud that Dr. Uh, Wiseman agreed to come on uh, 
board with this. And as I told her when we were asking her to come on board is that, do we have challenges? Yes. That's exactly why I'm here meeting with you. If it was easy, anybody could do it. If it was not going to be historic, anybody could do it. What we need is the best minds who have thought about this and to put it into practice. Because if we make it happen here in Prince George's County, it doesn't stop with us. It means you can make it happen to DeKalb County in Georgia. It means you can go to Michigan and make it happen. It means that we have the ability to move the county but the state forward. And don't you want to be part of that? I know that's why I ran for this office. And so those are the things I said, and she said yes. I said, wow, okay, great, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but we were so proud, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> and I'm sure this young man wished that when he was a teenager, he had not ever come to Springfield, Massachusetts and met me. Um, because when I met him many years ago, he was quite young and he was a teenager. Um, the first thing I know is he's one of the smartest people I've ever met in my life. And um, he could grasp the concept better than anybody. He also could sell you anything, too. And over the years, I've watched him grow, graduate from college, um, raise a tremendous family, um, beautiful children. Um, he and his wife have done a great job. And when I was running for office, I would always just call him and say, hey, I just need some advice on what I should be doing. And he would advise me. Um, and then he did me a favor. You know, I was, uh, many people don't know this, when, when I lost my job in the House of Delegates, I ran for county executive in 2002. A lot of people know this. And uh, I lost. And since I'd only wanted to go into public service, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. So I was at home, true story, um, on my couch. And my wife is the greatest person in the world. And I was sitting there on the couch, crawled up in the fetal position. And she said, honey, it's going to be all right. She said, but you have three children and you must get a job. <laughs> and I didn't know what I wanted to do. But Dr. Eubanks called me and he said, you know, you talk about the education stuff and you put those things in, in the General Assembly. Would you actually want to see that in practice? Don't you want to actually do something about it rather than just talk about it? And I said, yes. I said, you know, that's why I ran for county executive. He said, well, I got the next best job <laughs> at his Community Teachers Institute. He said, come here. I said, I don't know anything about teaching. Or, and he said, it's all right. He said, you just got to, it's about changing on a national level. And it was the best experience for me and probably the worst thing that could happen when I became county executive because it really, um, made my commitment to want to change our education system stronger. Um, and then I turned the tables on him and I said, well, head up our task force. And then we changed legislation. I said, great, I got this job for you. He said, I already have a job and it's very demanding and I have children. I said, well, you know, this, you know, this might spill. It's like, you know, it won't be difficult. It'll be easy. You know, get you in there, you chair the board, you know, there's no problems, there's no hiccups. You know me, I don't cause trouble. <laughs> but he took over as chair. And the reason that I wanted him to take over as chair is for the reasons that Dr. Davis talked about in leadership. You know, compassion. I wanted somebody to be compassionate in forging together a board of elected and appointed. I wanted somebody who really cared about the mission, and that was keeping, uh, making children's lives better. And I wanted somebody who would challenge not only me, but would challenge the system uh, intellectually and would be one of the most innovative thinkers. And he has done all of that. There is no point in the time that he has been chaired that I have not been proud of the work that he has done. I have not ever had a shred of doubt that he was doing what is right. Now, I probably would have done it a lot differently and a lot more angrily, <laughs> which would have been wrong. Because when you're changing a system like we're changing, what you need people to understand is, yes, it is going to be difficult. But the things that we are doing are necessary. 
and they will have repercussions in the future. If you don't think about where you are today, personally, and you think about what impact it's going to have down the road, then you can get a lot of great things done. He is going to be able to look back on his time as chair here and know that he helped shape the history of this county. And for that, I am forever grateful. If we can give him a little bit <laughs> Finally, you know, we have had difficulties in this, difficulties in this, um, in this county and around education. And so one of the things I'm always reminded for, uh, reminded of, is that, um, especially if my chief of staff was here, so I'm glad Nick is here, a county uh, administrator. Uh, she was here, she was like, never take on education. You know, it's just a difficult issue. That's why politicians don't touch it. Because you can't fix it in two years or four years, and it doesn't fit well on a bumper sticker. And, um, and that's good advice if you want to stay in office and you want to stay popular. It's probably bad advice for a person who remembers what it was like when he was 17 years old, two years older than his peers, and trying to figure out what the heck he was going to do in the world. And all I wanted to do was play football and maybe go in the Army or maybe, I don't know, do whatever. But no direction. But I wanted to just play ball. And there was a teacher who looked at me and said, you can't go. Now, mind you, 17, they're trying to just get you out of there, right? Everybody else let me go on the field. This lady would not, and I just didn't like her. She said, you had to do a report. I was not just going to pass you so you could play football and go on to do whatever. But I had to do extra credit. I had to read a book. And reading the book and, and that teacher changed my life. It is the first time I realized how fortunate and how blessed I was to have the parents that I had to be in a school system where their teacher took the time and said, I am concerned about you, Rashern Baker, one of 30 kids in my class, but I'm concerned about your life and what you're going to do, that I am going to make you live up to your potential, even if you don't want to. And because she did that, I felt guilty that I had wasted all of that opportunity that had been given to me. And I made a promise to myself that no other child would ever go through that if I had an opportunity to change it. And so why do we make the changes in the school system we make? It is because I remember what it's like to be 15, 17 years old and have no direction. Every single child that walks through our school system will understand what it's like to know what the future holds for them. Every appointment we make to the school board is important. Every decision we make impacts a child. I never forget that. And the individuals that I appoint don't forget that. Yes, there is difficulty there. Yes, there are challenges. Yes, there is pushback. But yes, there are breakthroughs. And someday in the future, a 58-year-old man or woman is going to stand up here and say, you know what? I was at Frederick Douglass, and somebody changed my life, and it motivated me to do something different. That is what it is all about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Baker. Uh, and so now, everybody now understands why we do what we do. But let's give Mr. Baker another round of applause. And I would like to congratulate the new board member and the reappointed board member and board chair. And that really concludes our program for this morning.